So, you're doing an LS build and you're wondering, what head hardware do you use? Do you use stock head bolts? Are you going to go with maybe some aftermarket head bolts? Or are you going to go for the big boys, the head studs? I am Nick with Scog and Dickey. Thank you for joining us for another one of our weekly tech videos. This week, we're going to be discussing cylinder head fasteners because we do get a lot of questions about this. When is it overkill? When is it not enough? Do I really need to use head studs? Can I get away with head bolts? We're finally gonna put some of these rumors to rest <clears throat> and maybe give you some guidance on what you can use for your next build. So the information we're gonna be using today is mostly the LS world and the LT world, naturally, the Gen 3, the Gen 4 LS, and the Gen 5 LTs. But some of the information we discuss here is information pulled directly from ARP and it's information that they have accumulated over the years with Chevrolet small blocks, Chevrolet big blocks, Ford, Mopar, even the import guys. So I understand this might be more of a platform specific video, but there's actually gonna be some good information here. So let's just dig in. This <clears throat> right here in this box is a set of the stock head bolts. These specifically are for your Gen 4 style blocks with uh, all the bolts being the same length. These are what you will find on all Chevrolet performance crate engines and all Chevrolet factory cars and trucks, whether it's a performance build or not. These are plenty strong, but we've had customers call and ask, when is it necessary to upgrade when of course you're adding boost? And that's what we're gonna be really focusing on. When does cylinder pressure really require you to go from these things to these, and even inevitably the big boys here? Now, I will say that a properly tuned vehicle the reason I say that is because, yes, cylinder detonation, problems with tuning, tuning and ignition timing, you can actually lift a cylinder head or blow out a head gasket, and it wasn't the cylinder hardware's fault. It was more along the lines of the setup or just an anomaly, something that just blew the engine up. It does happen. So what we're gonna be discussing here, we're gonna be discussing when you have a good running engine that has been properly tuned, good ignition timing, good fuel, and of course, good control. There's a big thing with coil power, and of course, processing power, your CPU, your, your computer for the engine has to be able to handle the higher horsepower that you're going for. Now these are used, like I said, in all the Chevrolet performance crate engines, and they're plenty strong. They're even used in the LS7 570 crate engine that came out. It's naturally aspirated. The cylinder pressure in it, even with 11 to 1 compression, these are perfectly fine. These will actually hold a decent amount of boost in stock form. We've noticed guys that take a 5.3 or a 6 liter truck engine out at the junkyard or maybe even an older LS1, LS2, or even an LS3 5th gen Camaro. They put a supercharger kit on it. They notice that they don't really have to change these out until they start hitting higher cylinder pressures, higher horsepower. We've seen customers push anywhere 10, 12, 15 PSI on the stock head gaskets block cylinder head and yes, stock cylinder head hardware. So these are plenty strong, <clears throat> but there are reasons to upgrade. One of them is these aren't reusable. If you happen to be in a particular racing class, for instance, where throughout the season, you are gonna be having to do some disassembly for inspection or maybe even fixing some problems that go down the road, these are a one-time use. We've heard of some of you guys that get real risky and you really want to try to reuse these, but GM absolutely did not design them to be reused. They are a torque to yield bolt. That's why the torque specs for these are way different than they are for these, and I'll get into that. These require a base torque and then a multiple step setting of degrees, and that is because the way these work, and these two, <clears throat> is a stretch, and that's what keeps great cylinder pressure in is the stretch that these bolts provide. It's co under constant tension. Well, once you do it once, they'll never be the same. So if you try to retorque them, it's not that they'll break, they won't hold the same tension anymore. So you end up problems down the road. So these are not reusable. <coughs> the ARP though, they are. These are built out of a different material and they have different torque specs. These actually use more of an old fashioned style torque setting where multiple steps in succession of say 40 foot pounds, 60 foot pounds, and then finishing with like a 75 foot pounds. What we've seen for years in the old small blocks and big blocks and Fords and Mopars over the years still work with these. These 
are plenty strong. And we have seen customers use these in five, three, and six through builds well up to a thousand horsepower or even more, which is pretty impressive. The LS platform has really good cylinder head surfaces on both the block and of course the decking on the cylinder head itself to sandwich the head gasket. They're very thick, they can hold a lot of pressure, but higher boost levels, higher cylinder pressures, higher horsepower, you're gonna need more hardware, or you're gonna need a stronger hardware, I should say. <clears throat> so stepping up to these can be a great upgrade, especially considering that a stud most of the time is much more expensive than it is a head bolt. So stock can handle quite a bit. These can handle more, but these, these are the big head honcho. And these are what you're gonna need for you guys that are pushing some serious performance. As with the head bolts, these can be reused over and over again. There's another benefit to these that not a lot of people talk about when compared to head bolts. Some people think that these work because they're stronger. Arguably they are stronger, but these are plenty strong too. So what's, what's the real benefit here? These actually have a more consistent pressure being applied when you torque these down. See, when you torque this down, the resistance you're fighting is under the head, but it's also the threads in the block. And over this long shaft, when you're torquing this down, you can get in technically some inconsistencies. It's usually not a big deal though, for us that are making you know, a street car with five, six, seven, eight hundred horse, these will handle just fine. Some of you guys getting into racing settings though, you need perfection, you need precision. And that's what this does because once that this stud has been screwed into the block, now the only thing that affects your torque is the friction between this and the surface on the cylinder head. So you know you're getting consistent torque ratings across the board. And of course the benefit of, it sure is easy to assemble these once you have them in the block. The head goes on perfectly every time. So that's more of me being lazy and pointing out a good feature, but it is a feature that I personally like. <clears throat> Again, these are for real high horsepower builds. Again, very, very strong from the factory. Actually, you'll notice the LSX blocks, a, a lot of the crate engines, even the B15 that's we've seen taken way past the 15 PSI that GM recommends to the customers, they still use a stock style head bolt. They use six per, cylinder, but they still use a stock style head bolt. So these are plenty strong. It's just that these can be reused time and time again. And in extreme circumstances, all these can be much stronger. I hope that I've been able to answer some of your questions. Some of you guys that are probably researching your five through junkyard build and you're wondering where you can save a couple bucks. Well, if you're looking for a pump gas build, there's a good chance Stock ones are gonna do just fine. And we sell the stock cylinder head bolts here in kits. They're very inexpensive compared to some of the higher grade aftermarket ones. One thing to keep in mind though, build it right the first time so you don't have to build it again. That's where you save the money and of course, save the work. A lot of you guys need to know that Boost or Nitrous is a little addicting. You start out with seven pounds, you go to 10 pounds, then you're at 15 pounds, and then you blow it up at 18 pounds and build it again for 25 pounds. We understand how that is. We're car guides too. Sometimes going ahead and grabbing the head stud or even the head bolt, preparing for future upgrades isn't a bad idea either. See, even a stock build, you can still use the head studs. A little bit of overkill doesn't hurt, but if you're not gonna use it, we're trying to save you some money. So once again, I really appreciate you guys stopping by for another one of our weekly tech videos. We do these once a week, every Friday, to answer some of the questions that we get from our customers here. This one we got from a customer over the phone. Actually, we get from plenty every week, but we felt it was finally time to do a video and explain it. Give us a like, a subscribe, and a share on both Facebook and YouTube. As usual, we're trying to push as much information as we can to help all of you guys. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next week.